Hello, everybody. Thanks for checking this out. Um, this is going to be a podcast edition of uh, Practice Ideas and Concepts. Practice along December 21. We're uh, working at do the, doing these practice along videos and uh, in this case, audio podcast three times a week. Um, and then we do other videos too on the practice ideas and concepts. But um, we're going to work at, at uh, developing a variety of skills. And so today, we're working with uh, the key of A and the B minor 7 chord. It's going to be featured. So let's, let's begin. So um, one of the first things I want to think about here is finding these notes, these um, B notes, let's say. And um, we have, have these kinds of shapes when we have an octave in a position. Uh, we can play two, two notes, one lower, one higher. And that helps to give us a framework um, to fit in other things. So we have this drop three, B minor seven, fingers two, three. And that's at the seventh fret. We're using finger two on the low note, and then we have finger three on uh, strings two, three, and four. And we also want to develop an idea of the specifics of how each one of these notes fits into the chord, fits into the octave shape. So from low to high here, we have root, flat seven, flat three, and the fifth. So we have B minor seven, drop three, voicing here, kind of fitting into all this. So that, that initial chord there is going to serve as another reference point, aside from these uh, octave shapes. So we have a, an audio that we can kind of Imagine as we play some of these arpeggios and things. All right, so let's remind ourselves of that and then octave shape, fourth position, and we're going to play this arpeggio. Let's play four notes. Pause. So that was from low to high. Go high to low, play four notes. Play the chord. And then let's repeat the octave shape. You can mix them around and do different things with them, but that's basically what we're trying to do. We're trying to remind ourselves of the sound of the B minor seven chord. And that, so that's a that's an aural reference and we are going to remind ourselves of where these octave shapes are and that's a you might say spatial reference or a visual reference all right so we're basically playing up and down a, a b minor seven arpeggio and reminding ourselves of those octave shapes again so what we're going to do here is is add a note to that all 
All right, so we're going to add the 11 into here. We'll duplicate this tone and place it right here between the flat third and the fifth, and we'll call it Oh, the 11 and we'll give this give this tone a little bit of a different marking to it because outside of this chord sounds you might say it's a non-chord tone I think in terms of the the very basic sound of B minor 7 so this is the B minor pentatonic Okay, so again, we'll play, play that chord that we had right at the beginning, play an octave shape, play straight up to the highest note, play the chord again, play the octave shape, visualize the octave shape as we play through this, visualize the sound of the B minor 7. So it's, um, you know, I'm saying visualize, but um, we're not actually doing anything. Um, well, we are do, doing something visual, but we are thinking about a sound. So we're visualizing a sound. I don't know if there's an equivalent word for that. Um, um, hearing, imagined hearing, uh, or imagined sound, something along those lines. So there we have the uh, B minor pentatonic. So again, practicing um, this whole process, octave shape, chord sound, and going up. You could choose four notes at a time. It's another activity. Go back down. Try mixing it up. One of the fun things about all this is we can be creative in our practice that that can bring freshness and and fun into the practice session all right so so notice we had this uh this 11 we had that in got a pentatonic um of course we had this arpeggio now we're adding two more notes to this so let's label some of these Say them out loud as well. So uh, we have root nine, flat third, 11, five, 13, flat seven, and then the root again. So this is the uh, Dorian, B Dorian. Well, so remind ourselves the sound of the chord shape of the octave shape. We can think about this, these tones as well. Um, just kind of moving up here. So going through. Okay. So try that. Try to see if you can repeat what I just did there. And then we're going to play the chord again. And we're going to head down the highest notes. <clears throat> All right, so now we're getting into um, some of the other activities here. We have the octave shapes. Okay. And we have uh, the rhythms. We talked a bit about these rhythms uh, yesterday, so we'll dive back into them again. And uh, but we have a new octave shape to work with. So let's select a tone out of it. 
So when you play one of the tones, so here we have uh, two full octaves, so we have two octave shapes. But when you play one of the tones, try to imagine where the others are. All right. And we'll go ahead and play uh, the rhythm here of the first one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna count you in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. <clears throat> so that was the first one. Maybe I'll outline these so we know where we are. Now we have the second one here. I'm gonna try that one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, we wanna coordinate that downstroke with the sound of the one, two, three, four. And um, I know I'm I'm counting out loud, um, but that's something that you also want to do in your practice session is to count out loud. It really helps to say things out loud. Um, and it helps to internalize. It helps to um, solidify everything. Let's try measure three here. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. All right. So that last one there is same. So, um, so we'll leave that one. Um, so yeah, we've got. Uh, three rhythms to work out and then of course you could try to play it all the way through there from the beginning to the end so we'll probably work on that a little bit tomorrow so let's look at the the reading excerpt here I'm just gonna play it once for you I'm gonna count out loud count myself in, in case you want to try to join me and we're going to think about just another spot to play this, basically. Um, we're gonna, let's, let's go with uh, second position. We were in fourth position yesterday. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay, so um, yesterday we talked a little bit more about just kind of location of notes. So if you want to stick with those areas, that's, that's going to be uh, perfectly fine. Um, but I want to show you some spots over here where we could play these notes. So we have measure one, we have E here and F sharp over here okay so on that first measure we could play one two three four okay so now those notes okay we have g sharp we have a and then the f sharp okay, let's look at that measure two one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, and then, uh, well, here we have E again. D, C sharp, B. Okay, so D, C sharp, and B. 
So let's take the beginning of that third measure. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then we have A coming up next here. Okay, so that is going to be fret two, string three. So let's see if we can go through, <clears throat> excuse me, all of that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay, and again, counting out loud <clears throat> while playing is a really effective practice for developing strong rhythm skills. Okay, so I highly recommend counting those out loud as you work through it, play through it. Okay, so here we have some uh, B chords. Let's see, so we have so this. These are all B minor seven. Okay, but this one uh, over the upper left, that's uh, it's B minor seven. So that's that's root position, root position, and that is a drop. To voicing and root position there, seventh fret. Okay, so we can play that one. Uh, the first finger, barring, and then finger three. All right, let's look at. Well, let's go over here. Look at B minor seven. This is first inversion, also drop two. You see, we're going to go back and you know, think about these octave shapes that we solidified in our minds. I we'll play these chord shapes. This one's a little bit awkward because of the second and third fingers need to need to reach. So this one can be a little challenging. Play. Okay, and then we have B minor seven. Here we have second inversion. So we're looking at the bottom left hand corner. And it's also drop two. Okay. Second inversion, drop two. Okay. So this is another opportunity for us to uh, visualize the, uh, the location of those octave shapes. Okay, now we're moving on to third inversion. Four notes, one root position, three inversions. Drop, two, we can bar this seventh fret, first four strings. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. 
<clears throat> so, all right, so there we have it. So we covered a lot of ground. We covered a lot of different skills. Uh, we worked at, at playing octave shapes. We worked at playing peggios, scales, uh, rhythm, uh, sight reading, development, and, um, and some chord shapes. So quite a bit to uh, work through there. All right, and we did it all pretty quick. So you may want to pause the video um, at moments and kind of reinforce some things. All right, I hope everybody has a great day, great practice session, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, <clears throat>